point. Good. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, regular council meeting of uh, March the 9th. I'll call the meeting to order. And before we do anything, as you can see, kind of hard to see mine for some reason, the way I'm sitting, we're all wearing purple ribbon. And I'm just going to, to say the pur purple Purple Day is a global event dedicated to promoting epilepsy awareness around the world to dispel myths and fears and reduce social stigma about the condition. A better understanding of epilepsy will help improve the quality of life of those with epilepsy. Purple Day is globally recognized annually on March 26th. In June 2012, the Government of Canada created the Purple Day Act and received royal assent. Uh, March 26th is officially recognized as Purple Day in Canada and around the world. So that's why we're all wearing these ribbons. I'll go back to my agenda. So we have an agenda. Uh, anybody have anything to add or? Delete. Yes, Councillor Donaldson. Yeah, I, I assume you all got my email that I would like to send a letter. Yes. To the RCMP. Yes. So wherever you want to put it. Uh, well, we can go. Can we go? Uh, we, I don't see. I don't see the correspondence. If we need a decision on that. We can we can put it. Uh, uh, where are we here for a decision? For a decision, we could put it on ten F if you want. Okay, ten F, and I'll refer I'll refer that to you. So if there's no other additions, uh, motion to approve. Okay, moved by moved by Richard, second by Glenn. All in favor, signify raising your hand. Contra minded. Carry. Any conflict of interest uh, declaration from anybody? Seeing none, and if we come to uh, an item where you feel that you're in conflict, you can declare it at that point. Presentation. We have a splash bar committee and I don't see the name of who we have, Linda. We have Linda here, Linda Gallagher, who is going to present on uh, the Splash Bar Committee. And you're on if you're ready All right. to go. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time. I know this is a sad day. And so I'll try to be as quickly, go as quickly as possible. I'm going to share the screen that just gives you some information about the Splash Park, hopefully. I don't lose everyone, but we'd like to thank you for listening to us and who we are. We're a group of volunteers. We are a nonprofit organization. And for some of you, you've heard some of this before, but for those that are new, thought we should give a little background or a little history of who we are. And we have worked really hard to develop a, a realistic plan for a splash park in our community. And for those that aren't sure what a splash park is, it is a combination of flowing, misting, spraying, jetting and splashing water. There is no standing water. And so there's been a lot of questions around, do you need lifeguards for a splash park? The answer is definitely not because there is no standing water at all. It's a lot of um, splashing and getting wet, but, and a lot of screaming and, but that's about it. We don't have to worry about significant, uh, injury. Uh, so we're going to talk about why our committee need, uh, why our community needs a splash park. Obviously this provides an opportunity for unstructured, inclusive and accessible play. We're thinking that by providing such an opportunity for our, our communities, we will address many of the needs that have been identified, especially with COVID in our community around children and play. So I'm just going to go quickly through this and get to the meat of it. 
uh, the benefits of a splash park, physical activity. There's lots of social and emotional learning through that. It is free. It's accessible and inclusive to all members of the community and it encourages healthy um, opportunities for everyone. We know that currently approximately 30% of children in Nova Scotia are obese or overweight and most are not meeting the recommended daily levels of physical activity, especially now during COVID. Uh, we, we see that as many of the more formal activities have been postponed or altered to uh, because of it. We also know that physical activity benefits children's mental, mental health, uh, confidence. It deals a lot with, uh, it really gives kids an opportunity to manage their anxiety or their concerns. And we want it to be an opportunity where it's unstructured it's unscripted, kids can just play, which is what we want to see all children doing. It's not an organized activity, it is play, so they can discover, they can explore, and it's for all ages. Uh, we know that there's about 24% of the children in Nova Scotia live in poverty in our area, it's more like 50%. And so that's why we really are, are focused on providing this as a free opportunity for all children, all families. And because of the way a splash park is set up, it's accessible. There is a slab which allows for mobility. It, uh, the structure is set up so that uh, you can easily maneuver around the different pieces in there. There's zero depth. And we want it in a, well, our location is highly visible so that people and near the amenities and it's actually on the bus route in the town. And obviously it's just, a, it promotes a community pride, active living, outdoor play. Uh, the closest splash park to us is in Shelburne, which is an hour uh, from town of the town of Yarmouth and the next one going up the valley is in Middleton. So those are the ones that are closest to us. So we think it will be an attraction to draw people here to the community. So we have an active uh, Facebook group and you can check that out at any time. And this is the exact structure that we're hoping to build or planning to build at the Mariner's Center. So it is 200 uh, square meters and it has, I think, 18 um, points of interaction, whether it's spray, uh, spraying, misting, dumping water. So, and for those that want to know it's not heated, that's why you'll hear the squeals from everyone that uh, uses it. So we did a study and we collected lots of information and the, the um, pie chart at the bottom is where would people be coming from the, for the splash park and you can see that uh, the community of Argyle is well represented as well as people from the rest of Nova Scotia. And if I'm going too fast, just interrupt me. Uh, so this is the big number here. The total project projected cost is $349,000. So what we've done was we've broken it into a pre-build with uh, uh, the cost of permits, uh, the cost of the um, equipment arriving. We would need forklifts and staff to unload it. We know that on the Mariner site, we have to consider where the water and sewage are, and power services are available on the property and all of the criteria that that would involve. So we budgeted after talking with Mark Brophy of $20,000 and we know that to dechlorinate it, it would be about $1,000 to set that up. We our construction costs are pretty straightforward in terms of the site bill uh, to prep to make sure that it is level. Um, the building that we need to house mm. the uh, two 
family style washrooms. We, in a conversation and having walked around the Mariner Center, depending on the location that is decided, there are two accessible washrooms that we may be able to utilize it, that are in the um, Anthony Pavilion. So that may be a cost saving. The pad itself and all of the things that we need, as well as a recognition sign for the donors. So that is pretty well the, it's a one-time cost of $349,000. So then to look at the operating cost, we compared that to, and we got information from pretty well every splash park in the province and some also in PEI in New Brunswick. And we used, looked at the highest cost for water, the operating in terms of cleaning and just to open and close the splash park each season. And so that would be a cost of $20,000. So that's the annual operating cost. I know there's not power in there, but um, the, uh, based on the information that we received, it was very minimal. Uh, that is just an example of our thank you all that we are uh, planning to put up to recognize the donors. So our funding, we're looking, we know the cost is 349,000. We've at what our ask is, is that we receive a third from the three municipal units and we received that funding from both the town and municipality of Yarmouth. And then we've, uh, we've been applying for grants yesterday. Actually, we submitted one for 125,000. We'll see where that goes, but that's the thing. And we have four more going out this month. So we have grants and I've met with um, both um, MLAs in our area and uh, the FP and then the committee themselves have committed to raising one third of the cost. So we're looking for your support. Uh, at this point, we do have permission from the town and municipality as well as from you to put it at the Mariner Center. So now we're looking at your financial support. What the town and municipality have uh, said, and I'll just read that to you from, they have, their motion was along with providing the funding. It was uh, ownership of the Splash Park will be transferred upon completion to the owners of the Mariner Center and ongoing operations will be part of the Mariner Center so that it would be turned over to the management board of the Mariner Center for operations. So that's all the information. I know it's a lot, um, but if you have questions, I would be happy to answer any and all. Anybody have any questions? Councilor Aubrey. It's um, not so much of a question, just, well, kind of some clarity, I guess. So what we're looking at, you're looking for a third of that 349,000 a third of that divided by the three councils. So yes. that 30, and that is a one time, that's it. That's done. it. Absolutely. That's, to, that's to put the splash park, the splash pad up. Yes. Then you're looking for operational year after year after year. So at the high end, you're talking $20,000 a year for water, for meat, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. you're looking at roughly not quite $7,000 from Argyle per year to run the splash park. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make Thank sure everybody's clear you. on that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you. That helps. Um, I just, yeah, just so that everybody is, you know, aware. Um, you answered my question about the motion from the other two. I just wanted to make sure that, that our council was clear on the motion from the other two. Um, I just want to say that uh, I am part of the Splash Park Committee. I've been on the Splash Park Committee since we started this, uh, this project. And one thing that has really stood out for me because it, you have to keep in mind, this is a group of volunteers who have been working tremendously hard to get all this information out. But one of the members of the committee is a doctor's wife. And the day we had a meeting and she said, my husband is, 
you know, this would be a great thing to have in Yarmouth because we're looking at doctor recruitment and retention and we don't always necessarily have a lot of stuff to offer uh, doctors coming in, but this would definitely be an asset that would be beneficial to new families coming in. And, and when uh, my kids were little, like you think about all that, right? That would have been a fun, fun thing for them to do. So I just wanted to add that in to the, to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Dachimo. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm just wondering what's, uh, have you guys made any projections about like how many days? Uh, of course, it'll be in the summer when it's warmer. Uh, our, our weather here seems to you know, be pretty unpredictable. Is there like a projection of how many days in the, in the season, uh, whatever season, I guess the splash bath? Uh, the, the, the whatever season uh, you have, how many days, what's the projection? Uh, our, we would like to open early June and close once uh, school returns because that would certainly limit the, uh, the usage. So we would start to winterize probably, uh, most of them close that the Labor Day weekend, we're thinking probably the weekend after. Thank you. Councilor Sonia. Thank you, Warden. Uh, Linda, thank you for your presentation. It's really nice. Uh, <clears throat> I think a splash park is great. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, the study you made on, on the operational cost, was those all separate? For uh, what I mean by that, if it falls under the uh, Mariner Center umbrella, is it possible that those costs could be less than what you projected? Absolutely, because we had talked about staffing and this is a, a downtime at the Mariner Center. So in our projected cost, we um, allowed for an hour and a half to two hours per day of manpower for cleaning and things like that. But that would be something that could be done easily by the staff that are already employed. And we've talked to Duram about, is that a possibility without, and he said, absolutely, because of the timing that the splash park is. So yes, the cost would be reduced. Thank you. Anybody else? CAO. Hi, Linda. Hi. <laughs> Hi, when, when do you anticipate, so some of these larger projects, um, especially with provincial money that um, they don't always go as planned, right? Like you, you put an application, sometimes it takes a while. Mm -hmm. uh, are you expecting a construction in the coming summer season or do you anticipate it like being a year or, or more in the, in the future? And the reason why I'm asking is, I mean, I don't think it's a secret that the Mariner Center is looking at an expansion. Mm -hmm. You're looking at chlorinated water and all sorts of things that an aquatic center might require. So it would just, I'm just trying to understand mm -hmm. what you anticipate around mm -hmm. the timing of this project. Well, we've been at work trying to work in conjunction with those that are for the expansion because we do believe that we want to, um, we don't want to build a park and then be in the wrong location. So we have been uh, trying to pay as much attention to that. We're looking at uh, the spring of next year, 2022. So that as the expansion moves forward that we can make all those considerations for um, the location. Okay. Anybody else? See no one else. Again, thank you very much, Linda, for your presentation. It's a great presentation. I think it's, uh, it's a great project as well. And uh, it's something that we'll have to bring to our, our council. It's not mm -hmm. on the agenda tonight for, for discussion, but, but uh, we know it, it, you don't need to know tomorrow. So, <laughs> so we will. We will be discussing that uh, for, for sure at one of our meetings and make a decision on that. So, well, thank you very, very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please uh, reach out and contact me, and I'll do my best to find out the answer. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much again. Bye. Bye. Okay. We'll continue.
The next item is uh, adoption of minutes. We have the committee of the whole meeting, uh, the minutes of February 23rd. And just wondering if, if there's some, anybody wants to move the adoption. Moved by Council Bork, seconded by Council Sonia. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary-minded, carried. The next one is the Planning Advisory Committee minutes of uh, February 23rd. Moved by Councillor Albright, seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All in favor? Contraminded, carried. The next one is the ARC minutes, January 21st. Moved by Councillor Albright, seconded by Councillor Bork. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary-minded, carried. Business arising from the uh, minutes, it's a priorities. There's a couple of attachments. And this is a, 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 a document that, that was put out by uh, our CAO and our clerk. And it's basically showing the, 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 the projects that we have going and, 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 and our, our bucket list of, of what we might want to see. This is at this point mostly for information because I don't think we're going to discuss much of that tonight, but we will be holding a special meeting at a later day to discuss this and hopefully it'll be before our priority setting. I might correct the uh, CMUs. So it would probably be for that. So are there any questions or do we go to our CEO? Do you have any more to explain on this, our CEO Muse? Uh, only that, I, I just wanna be clear that some of these projects will have to happen in the next 12 to 15 months. Um, and some of them are optional to be done in the next 12 to 15 months. So it's hard for me to go through each one and say this, that, but I mean, you you know the projects, you know which ones have begun, and and you know which ones are probably you know that that have to finish, right? Uh, you know the ongoing capital projects, for for instance, you know for the most part, those are things that we have to finish for exactly. your reasons, right? Yes. So you know, before we get into a conversation amongst council about what we what you would like to see happen in the community, and I, I believe it was Councillor Digden that raised this the last time we had a priority setting meeting is. Well, it's hard for us to set priorities appropriately if we if we don't have a strong sense of how much time is already being spent on the priorities that we're still working on now. So the purpose of this is to give you that information, is to say, look, to the best of our ability, I know this is not 100%, and that this doesn't represent every single thing that everybody works on. It's the larger projects that, um, that I tried to incorporate and already after you know doing many iterations of this you know there's there's probably three of them that are on there you know one of them you just had a presentation on right so that may be a priority of yours right a splash park so so that 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 being said all those things um being said I think it, it's better to have this conversation in a special meeting and and I guess the only the, the biggest reason why I put it on the agenda now is, is if you had any concerns or questions it might be useful to have that conversation in the public forum, and then that can lead into the special project, uh, special meeting. So does anybody, have you all had a chance to look at this? And you have, does anybody have any comments or questions regarding these? At least it gives us something to look at. It gives us something to, to uh, uh, it, it gives us something kind of ahead of our meeting to, to be able to think about it for sure. And it doesn't mean that everything that's here is going to be on our priority list, but at least it's uh, it's it's items that, that, that potentially could end up on our list for sure. Councilor Degden. Uh, thank you. Uh, it looks good. It looks very good. Again, uh, CAO, thank you very much for the work that you've been doing on this. And it was me that had mentioned it. You're right there. Uh, one thing I definitely would like to work on, uh, if we can ever get COVID behind us, and definitely going to need some uh, some direction from our CAO, 
is I'm, I am hearing a lot down here about street lights and would just like to find out what way to go or what way we may be able to go. Uh, for the most part, for the people I've been talking to, they know that it, it, it may add to an additional cost, you know, to have uh, lights down in this area. And you can't expect all the municipality to pay. Uh, I don't believe there's going to be lights down here, but it's definitely something I'd like to look at in the future. Thank you. Anybody else? See your news. Uh, uh, so the, the ones that I wouldn't have included on this list, and I just added street lights to it, um, airport right sizing, uh, mosquitoes, uh, splash park, and Wedgeport School. Uh, Wedgeport School being the old school, not the new one. So what is it that we need to be thinking about moving ahead? Mm -hmm. um, so those, I'll just add them on this list. You know, the list is designed to be as complete as possible. It doesn't mean we're going to achieve everything in the next year. That's impossible. But it's to have the discussion. And for those things that don't fall in your immediate priorities, it doesn't mean it falls off the table. It allows for a conversation to happen around, well, things like streetlights, for instance, is, is, if, is if the whole community is interested in, in streetlights, not just some communities, then we need to design a large project. If it's just community-based that we're looking to solve that problem, then it's a smaller it's a smaller project and, and it requires a different analysis. So both are possible. It really depends on, on what you're looking for. Obviously with the dark sky certification, uh, always in the back of our minds that we would, whatever we did from a streetlight perspective would have to respect uh, the regulations and the restrictions that might come out of that. So that's the purpose is to put at that a whole list as much as possible on the list and start talking about which ones go in which order. Okay. Councillor Sonia. Uh, thank you, uh, Warden. Uh, I'll add to, uh, I guess, to, to Councillor Digden's point. I, I think you, you, you served us well by putting these point by point. And if you refined it any, it's going to be great, especially for the new guy here. Um, I, I, I get to see exactly what's, what's on the board and it's, um, I like it. It's uh, great. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, it is. It's a great. It's a. It's a great document, and it, it gives us something to look at for sure. Gives us kind of a heads up and and something that we can think about. So whenever we're ready for a a, a special meeting on this, then we'll we'll get together again, and then that way we'll be able to, to discuss it fully and and in detail. Okay, we'll move on. This is notice uh, a notice of a period for, for uh, municipal policy and it's a fire service registration policy. Now, is this a brand new policy? I, I see there was something highlighted or is it, in, is it in this one? I thought I saw something highlighted, maybe not. Not in the policy. This is a new policy, is that correct? So yes, it's new. It's something. It's something that that, from what I read, it looks like. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like we're going to ask all our fire departments to register like this, the ones that are already there, and do this on an annual basis. Okay. At least give us all the information of what they have, uh, you know, the, the 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 trained personnel and everything else. So, this is this is uh, what this is all about. Then you can go ahead, uh, uh, Seattle News. Uh, the policy is a model policy developed by the AMA, uh, the Association of Municipal Administrators. Um, it is in response to um, the fact that some of the registration documents that were coming out. Uh, really did not have a lot of information on them. So all of the fire departments that offer fire services are currently registered with us. Uh, it's just this policy allows for a much better understanding of the services that they can deliver. So it is written uh, specifically to address some changes in regulation and also to, to make sure that there's a, an understanding of 
not only which departments are registered, uh, it would also include our ground search and rescue. They would be registered under this as well. Any service prov provider, which the previous registration was unclear on. Uh, also, it, it would, um, it, it tells the fire departments the minimum standard around liability coverage, et cetera. Now with us, we make sure they have that coverage because we do, we, we manage that insurance policy on their behalf. So I can assure you that the, the, the liability insurances and all the insurances that are listed in this policy, every single one of our fire departments already has that. Um, so it's a, it's a matter of letting them tell us what services they can deliver. In some instances, they may not be able to, to deliver a full service, right? Uh, for, for training purposes, training reasons or volunteer reasons, being you know not enough volunteers or whatever the case may be. It may be an example where one of the departments cannot do that. So this is an opportunity for them to say, look, we're registering with you and this is what we do. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a big improvement to the original documents that were um, presented beforehand. Yeah. And is, this is just noted. So this is gonna come up. Correct. Do we, do we, do we uh, uh, have a motion on this for first reading? No. Notice that it's going to come up for first reading. Okay. Yeah. Any questions on this or comments? Councilor Albright. I'm just curious if the fire departments know about this. Like, do they know that this is coming? Have they been have they been updated? No. Okay. I was just curious. No. Uh, after the notice period, we will inform uh, the fire departments of the okay. registration process. Okay. Anybody else? Nobody. Don't see anybody. So this will come up. We will have this probably at a future meeting uh, for first reading, and then from there it'll be it'll be published and whatever, right? As a policy. Okay. If no more questions or discussion. We have counselor's reports. Does anybody have any counselor's reports that they want to give? Seeing no hands. Oh, okay. Oh, I oh, oh, right. Sorry. I submitted a report. I submitted a written report. Is it written? I don't see it. It's not it. attached, but I did submit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Warden. It's Lori. I only received a couple of reports, so I didn't attach it. I didn't know if you were gonna speak about it, if counselors were gonna speak about it at the meeting. So I will attach it. Okay. Thank you to those who submitted. Yeah. Okay, so leave it at that, Councillor Dickton. Uh, thank you, I'll give a report next meeting. That's good, that for thank two you. Months. Thank you. Anybody else? No, oh, Councillor. Donaldson. It's not a real report. I just would like to, to say that since we've started being able to attend meetings that were not part of the committee, I find it's been very helpful to be able to set in and listen to meetings. And I mean, it's all because of COVID. We don't want COVID, but if there's a good side, it's allowed us to. Uh, attend meetings with that we probably wouldn't attend and and you're you know more of what's going on so you can answer questions better in the public so i just wanted to say that is part of a report i guess okay that's good answer sonia i just want to echo what uh, richard just said because i was thinking the same thing and i uh, i want to thank glenn again for bringing that up because it's very very helpful Okay. Nobody else. Uh, Councilor Sherton, no, you, you didn't have your hand up. No. I uh, just like to say that uh, Councilor Sherton has joined us. He had a previous meeting that ran into this one. So it's a little late, but he's here. Okay. Uh, next one, Warden's report that's attached. 
staff report will go to our CAO. I'll just ask if there are any questions or comments on the report. Does anybody have any questions on the report? I, I see we've received one, one request for expression of interest for Tuskit, and that's, that's, that's good for the housing. Glad to see that. I believe Councillor Sonia had a, his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Cancel that. Sorry. Don't don't scratch your nose or anything. I never know what what you want. <laughs> uh, 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 on that issue, uh, on that item, sorry, uh, Ward Muse. I hope to have something for Council uh, at the Committee of the Whole meeting at the end of the month. Um, we do have a meeting between individuals here to go through that. Yes. Okay. Councillor Donaldson. This will be very quick. It's to do with the rural internet, which I speak on quite, quite often. But apparently this new wireless system that Bell has out uh, actually is reaching a fair number of my constituents and there's a fair number of people that are signing up on that. So that's a very good thing. And the short term until the fiber off is laid, which we have no idea what date that will be, but there seems to be a fair number of uh, satisfied customers getting the new service by the wireless route. I thought I'd mention that in case anybody's still listening and doesn't know it's available. Yeah, that's good. It doesn't cover all of my district. It covers mostly from Lower Argyle up through Argyle Head in Roberts Island. Do we know what speed they're getting with that? Are you, are you familiar? I'm having a hard job hearing you. Do, do you know do you know what speed they're they're getting on that? Uh, 25 and if you want to pay extra it's up to 50. Oh that's good then. It's 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 average it's way better than what people are used to. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? If not We'll continue and we are number 10 for decision. The uh, attachment for the uh, article uh, C24 fire inspection, there's an attachment. Now, is this just an addition to, to what we, I see on this one, CAO, that there's a, a, a highlighted, uh, uh, item on there. Is that the only thing that's been changed? Or yes, that's what's been changed. So do we do first reading with this because there's a change or can we approve it? I believe because it's under decision that you would have received your notice period on this already. I already firm with Lori, however. Okay, but it's not, but it's not a, um, it's, it's we're not, we're not, we're, we're approving it if we do that. We're not, or is it, it's not for first, first reading. Okay, have you all had a chance to, to look at that? Councillor Shrek. So move that uh, the fire inspection uh, be approved as, a, as a presented. We have a second there. Seconded by Councillor Donaldson. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Naming of Article C25, naming of municipal streets and private roads. And this one here is the same thing. We already had that and we've added, we've had it the section where in case of an existing private road where the road name, where the road name sign is absent for any reason, the road name sign shall be erected by the municipality with all required fees being borne by the municipality. So that's new. And the rest is all the same. So again, 
tickets for decision. And we have a motion. So move. Moved by Councillor Surrett, seconded by Councillor Dick Dickman. Um, any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded. Carried. Water shortages. Item C. Again, there's an, there's two attachments, and one of them is uh, again, uh, CO. You'll have to help me on this one. The, the the draft that you have shows shows where the best place might be to have a well, and and I see you scored them. Correct. So. It, it, it looks like the recommendation, or not recommendation, but the, based on the assessment that the Ilgo Fire Department and somewheres in Wedgeford might be two areas where would be the best place. Am I correct? Well, I'd say first, uh, this topic, this issue is is uh, was raised by Councillor Sonia. He wanted an update on it, and so. I can discuss. I mean, I can answer your question on on this particular document just wanted to show council two things one where we're at in the project like we are in a planning stage here so it says draft on that um, we don't necessarily have every um, possible location for a, a public well listed here um, there there may be other places that are suitable uh, right now what we're focused on is what does the data tell us about where the the draft has hit us, the draft, the drought has hit us the most. And, and where are we currently sourcing water? So when you take those into account, obviously there's nothing here that lists any location in East Pubnico or West Pubnico. It doesn't mean they weren't impacted by the drought. It means that they have an alternate source of water yeah. right now. Yes. So what we're trying to do is deal with like, what's the highest priority? Uh, Wedgeport Como's Hill has in the last two droughts been the, most impacted and that you know that has to do with all sorts of reasons that i don't i, I won't list here but certainly it's it's the rock formation it's all sorts of reasons why but everybody was impacted but wedgeport Como's hill uh was probably impacted the quickest and the longest so it highlights the importance of wedgeport as a potential location so the two that we so, so how we, and I, I could probably talk for days on this one, so I'll probably try to speed it up. So what we try to look at is, okay, well, it's not just the construction of a well, it's what happens after, who maintains it, um, you know, where's the, you know, where's the electrical panel for the, for the, for the pump, where's, the, like, is there a reservoir, uh, is there, is there a fire component associated with this particular water, uh, are we trying to solve more than one problem, for instance, like, I can tell you that the Wedgeport Fire Hall has a drilled well and does not source water from that well, uh, or doesn't do it well, uh, which is why they have a dug well there as well. So that's a lot of wells. Anyway, uh, so from, from our perspective, we're just trying to figure out, like it's not just the construction, it's also future use. So, the, so uh, this, this list took that into account. It, it may not be a complete list, um, but I, I wanted to show council how we might come to a decision around choosing a location and the things that we would measure is is it more expensive or less expensive to construct what's the maintenance what's the distance from existing services would we create a traffic problem is there parking there already are we going to are we going to create a problem by going there i know that you know lake george for instance had a great water source but there were cars lined up forever that were causing some problems for instance and then the last is like what is the water access history of that area so those are the things that we think quantitatively that we would measure in trying to make a decision. As you know, um, you know, council has decided to look at the possibility of drilling a public well, uh, but we have not landed on whether or not that's the appropriate solution. So the motions that I have is, you know, look at Como's Hill, look at Tusket, and we are we had looked at Como's Hill, and that is going to prove very expensive to fix, 
and Tuscott is still being looked at. The location of our admin building is going to cause a traffic congestion problem uh, because we have just that one public road and that's Highway 308 on uh, coming into that road and we don't have any excess parking in our in our build. So for that reason, it scores a little lower than the others. Eelbrook Fire is, is a logical place because it's a new construction. So, you know, you're going in, you're gonna, you're gonna drill a well, you're gonna put a reservoir at the same time, you're gonna do things at the same time, and that's gonna prove useful to the fire department itself, presuming that they construct, can construct this year. So we felt like that one was very opportunistic. Um, anyway, um, that was a lot longer than I thought it would be, but uh, I just wanna let you know, this is where we're at and, and our remo coordinator has provided a memo to show you where we're at on the planning. Um, and we will have a complete report for you uh, in probably the coming, you know, I'll, I'll say weeks. Uh, I don't know, it won't be, it won't be months, okay? So it may be, you know, four weeks, but it won't be more than that. We're actively looking at potential solutions there. Well, definitely it's something, you know, I mean, we're looking at the summer, we, we can't wait forever to do that. I can't remember what month we, we, we went into uh, starting getting uh, the drugs last the last couple of times, but uh, definitely if we're going to do something, it'd be good to be ready for this for this coming summer in case as well. So any questions, Councillor Strack? Uh, just to answer you, uh, Mr. Warden, it was uh, last year in June, in and uh, and I do know <laughs> I was involved in a lot of it. Uh, looking at the uh, Eelbrook Fire Department, and and I'll and I'll get this question to the CAO. Eelbrook Fire Department could be five years away, as as far as uh, having water there, and the reason I'm saying that is. There's no plan, there's no money, and nothing there at the moment. I, uh, so th that's, that, that to me is, a long, is still a long-term solution. When I, when, when I had made a kind of a motion to look into this, uh, uh, to, to get something done so people could go a little closer for water, uh, I, I totally disagree. I guess I thought maybe something would be at the municipality Somehow we could have looked at it a little closer. I, I don't buy, I don't buy, that's my personal opinion about the municipal office uh, congestion. They're not, people are not there every two seconds. You, you know, it's not like downtown Barrington Street, Halifax. Uh, I don't see any safety issue uh, at the municipal building. I think that could be incorporated quite easily uh, I don't think the reasoning has been looked at properly, but you did say, Mr. CAO, that, CAO, that you would be bringing some other discussion to this later on. Am I right in the next, in the weeks down the road? Would that be right? This is, this topic will be coming back on the agenda. Yes, the, the, the analysis of the locations are draft. I can assure you that the maintenance people would tell you that there would be a problem in our location. Uh, they've raised it already uh, with us. Um, so I will, uh, if you want to have that information directly from our maintenance staff, I would be more than happy to have them provide it. Uh, I would. Their assessment of that. Um, uh, what we have to, we have to understand is that that the traffic at that location wouldn't just be for that. Like, so the, so, so our municipal building would have traffic in and out for a variety of purposes, including, including us, but also customers coming in. So depending on where you would want to put that service, uh, you could cause an issue. Uh, now, if you put it further down JE Adfield road and away from our building, uh, you then create a little less of a congestion situation, but, uh, you also are taking your equipment and your electric uh, connections and all the other things that you would want to have attached to that further away. So 
no locations impossible. I don't want to suggest that 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 there that it is absolutely impossible to do it at our at our admin building, but it does create some logistical issues that are real. Um, so we are more than happy to add different uh, locations to this list. I think you know the discussion is important, and I think the dis I think you you know you raise points that 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 point to the need to look at this in a more detailed way. It's not just, we're gonna do this, right? There, we have to think it all the way through. Uh, unfortunately, um, there are some environmental issues that we have to take into account when we drill these wells and we actually maintain and own them. Uh, the regulations under a municipally owned facility are different than some of the facilities that we have that, you know, out of the, out of the, out of the, um, you know, gracious donation of, of, of the public have provided some locations, right? So, so all of these things are being analyzed uh, and will be part of a broader report. If as counselors, you feel that there's a location that's missing, certainly either here or outside of this meeting, uh, we would absolutely look at additional locations. Uh, Mr. Warren, if I may just add a comment. Also, uh, I just want to be sure that you understand that I, I do, it's not just, which I almost had in the back of my mind was drilling a well and people would come there. Once you brought it up about having some, a, a bigger tank or some holding tank, you know, I never realized that. It was a great point that you, that your staff has brought out and certainly it's just not, yeah, I, I do get it. But this will be coming back uh, further down the road and, uh, you know, I know summer is coming quick. And I know that the people are going to be yelling. Hopefully, we don't know if it's going to be dry or not. But thank you very much for your attention to this. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Okay. Um, okay uh, Council Albright, did you have your hand? Okay, Council Albright first. Okay, Council Sonia first, and then we'll move we'll Council Albright. Yeah, as far as locations, and again, I'm directing this to, to Alain, uh, because... Uh, in, in Westport, for instance, there's a home on the Cartra Road that apparently has a dug well and that went uh, dry from my understanding. So uh, I'm saying that a location like that, if you were to drill a well there and put a reservoir, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're supplying the home uh, with water along with the public as well. It's just, it's just an idea that I wanna, you know, uh, for you to understand that that maybe a place like that, uh, since it's already short of water, it would be an ideal location. I don't know how how the traffic would be around an area like that. I have no idea. Maybe it is impossible, but uh, I know that the uh, uh, the reason I brought this up to you, Ala, was was the fire department uh, was was quite busy in the last few years here, and we all know that they were they were pretty well strung out. Anyhow, this. My thoughts. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. Um, CAO, I'm just kind of wondering, are we are we thinking this will happen this summer? Is this something, is this a hope? Is this a wish? Is it a reality? Um, because I I partially agree with what Councillor Surrett said. Um, Mealbrook Fire Hall will not be built by this summer. I don't know if it'll be five years, but definitely not by the summer. So I'm kind of wondering about timelines and I, I really appreciate the, the, the work that the maintenance staff, I, I rely on that. They know, I don't know, right? So I appreciate what they, they've brought forward to us. And if they, to me, I feel like if they have said it would be congest, congested and it would be a problem, then I respect that. And, and I appreciate that they've done that for us. So I guess timeline is kind of my question. Well, I, I think there's 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 certainly a lot of political political um, residential interest in this. Like, I think that our residents would like to see a better solution than what we have right now. And the Remo coordinator has been very clear: uh, delivering and having free drinking water at the expense that we did it in the way that we did it is just not a long term solution for our communities. And I mean, you know, like for those that require it because of 
poverty or other circumstances, we have organizations that we can work with and we can provide drinking water to those organizations and those organizations can take care of their of the people they know require it. For the most part, what was happening was people were taking free water because it was free and it, it cost a lot of money and not just a lot of money, a lot of time and effort. You know, there are counselors that are sitting around this table that I know traveled water outside of election time, um, traveled water from door to door or from fire department to fire department. Or And then I know there's up teen volunteers, fire volunteers. It didn't matter how many times we asked them, they said yes. So it is really not a long-term solution. The, the recommendation that's coming from Remo and the province is the best solution is an on-site solution. So one of the, the, the solution the, 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 to address this issue, we can't solve a drought, right? Uh, but to address the issue in the best way we can is we need to find better ways for people to solve their own problem on site, which means water conservation. It means, you know, more affordable ways for that they can drill their well and lend and we can lend that money to them. It might be a, an expansion of our lending program that might assist them. Maybe there's a maybe there's a way we can assist them a little bit better there around the interest rate and other things that we can do better and we can do better. And so the other the other part is the is the actual drilling of wells, which what people people have a sense that that's what they need in their communities, and um, I think that that's a harsh part of the solution as well. So in terms of Eelbrook, I think Eelbrook is an ideal location, but only when they're ready for construction. What I would see is that is that council with the recommendation from staff would have would have like a, a multi year solution where you'd be like you might put two wells in a year where you pick certain areas. So like the recommendation and the draft indicates two or three locations that would be more than ideal. That doesn't mean we would stop there. It means that it would influence our or the order upon which we would go after this. Uh, this and, and to answer your question around, can it be done in the summer? The answer is yes. If we can land on the location, uh, we can put it in our budget and we can do something as early as this summer. Um, of course, with the caveat that we don't know how it's gonna work. Uh, around, you know, like whether the drilling will be successful, we would take the same chance as anybody else would uh, by drilling their own wells. Um, we are ironing out the environmental regulations as we speak, and um, we should be in a position where we can add to our service. It will not look like the service you see in the town where it's this bulk station and like that, that is an incredible service that, that we cannot duplicate, but what we could potentially do is put in a reservoir tank that would allow multiple people to go a day and then have the reservoir tank fill overnight so that it wouldn't empty every all the time, right? So yes, the, the plan would be to try to do something this summer, um, but maybe not in that location. Okay, we had Councilor Donaldson. Very, very quickly <clears throat> on the municipal building site did they give any thought to using the lot that we're leaving as a buffer zone between our our building and the other side of the solar panels? There's a, a lot that's not going to be developed. Could something be set up there? It's out of the way. It's still very close to the main highway. Uh, and I was thinking more on the lines of the one in Yarmouth, probably not as sophisticated, but if it, if it, if it means location and traffic congestion, it seems to me that would fix the problem. It's as about as central as you can get if you're only going to do one for this year. Just a thought. And I, I don't want to go into a discussion about it, but it's something that I would like to look at in the future or get the staff to report back on that particular lot. That, that lot was not part of my comment around congestion. Uh, the congestion piece was really around the entry point uh, and where the customers would typically park. It's not practical to do it where staff parks because they'll be there all the time and there's no in and out to there. So you can't do it there, but you could potentially do it at the front. My, our conclusion is that there, it's, it's very congested there. We will look at that location as a potential secondary location. There is another location in Tuscott that we're actively looking at and it's an existing artesian well um, and it's, uh, it's not far away from the, uh, trail where people could literally kind of turn into that trail there, where it's right below the, the hill 
and, and could in theory access that point, but we're, we're still waiting on information on that. I, I, I like that location better uh, just because it's, it's um, the well is already known to be a well producing one. And so it would be to bring the water from that location to another would be the challenge. But both locations will be considered for you. Uh, okay, Councilor Bourgeois, did you have your hand up? No. Okay, Councilor Strat. I'll just say just quickly. Uh, I'll say I'll tell you one thing, Alain, and this this will go to the CAO. Yeah, Alain, uh, what they did with the pump that we use at the Allen District well, that was a short term fix. And next year, if we could use that to to buy you guys time, I just thought of that. I don't know if it would work in Nichols district, where there would be a well around the fire department to get an extra pump. That might be a, uh, one of the solutions in the back of your mind. Just wanted to throw that in. Thank you. Your location at Islands and District was discussed with our remo coordinator and the need to have a permanent pump solution to your location was discussed because it worked very well for that particular, for the volume that was needed there, it worked very well. Anybody else? The, the, the one thing, okay, like, like at the uh, at the islands fire department, can people go there? What what I don't know what type of holes or whatever. I mean, if you go if you go to some places, you can only fill the big tanks. You can't you can't fill jugs. You can, and I think that's important too. That was brought up to me a few times. If there was a place where people could just go and fill their own jugs, they would do that as well. And but you take like okay, if you go to the uh, uh, water supply that the army put in, there's no way. I mean, it's you can't fill a jug with that. I mean, you're you're filling tanks. It's what. So would we be set up if we do anything like that? I think it would be important to have something that if people want to go fill jugs. At least they could do that, and it might alleviate some of the water that we're giving away too. You know, I mean, if they know they can go somewhere and fill their own jugs. So this is for decision. What are we deciding on here? That that kind of uh, I'm not sure what we need a motion on this for. Yeah, that could easily have gone under for information. Um, I think I think what we want to do is 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 keep it on the table. Um, okay probably to table a decision until we can finalize a report would be the right thing to do. And that would be that would be a motion that we should make now to table this until we, we have more information and what you know before we can make a decision. So if we need someone to make that motion. Councillor Bork moved, seconded by Councillor Surrett. There's no more discussion. Call for the question, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contraminded, carried. So it's table until we have more information and we'll deal with it when, when, when we do have that. The Remo budget is the next one. It's pretty much the same budget as what they had. It's higher than what they had spent, but uh, they, they've looked at this, I'm sure. And uh, I guess it's just, it, it was recommended, I, I think, did we recommend this at our meeting to bring to council for a yes. yes, we have done that. So, Councillor Donaldson. I'll make a motion that we pass the remote budget. Seconded by Councillor Dickton. Any questions or, or comments? Councillor uh, Digden. Uh, thank you. So one thing I'd like to say, um, as far as when we came together with this, it's been talked about for years and years and years as far as the town of Yarmouth, the municipality of Yarmouth, and the municipality of Argyle doing this amongst them. There was always some uncertainty as to whether or not it would work. It's working very well. And I think it's working very well because of the people that we have at the top and they're taking care of it for us. So it, it's it's working out well between the three organizations or the three uh, three uh, partners, I guess, that's in it. I agree. Thank, thank you. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Any other comments? 
Call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying, not by raising your hand. Contrary minded. Perry. George's Bank moratorium. What you're looking for, the moratorium is due to end in 2022, I think I read here. And what they would like is our support and writing letters to both the, um, uh, this one here is Nova Scotia Federation of uh, Municipalities, NSFM, and also to the Honorable Chuck Porter, which is Nova Scotia Minister of uh, Energy and Mines, and to Seamus O'Regan, who is Regan, who is the Department of Natural Resources. And I guess it's to say that uh, we hope that they support the, uh, the extension of the moratorium. They don't feel that having uh, Drillers on George's Banks is a good idea. And obviously if there was more touring there before, then perhaps someone else thought that it was a good idea. So basically what we're looking for is a motion to, to uh, send these. Okay, Councillor Dodgemo, that motion. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'd like to make a motion that we send uh, these people a letter. Uh, I think it's uh, you know vitally important that we support this. Uh, Georges Bank has, you know, for years has supported our communities, uh, uh, you know, directly here in Argyle in Southwest Nova, all the South Shore, uh, indirectly all across Nova Scotia, probably you know indirectly in Canada uh, with seafood production. Uh, we also our neighbors to the south. Uh, United States of America, they've, uh, you know, fished the Georgia Banks for years and years and years, and they've also benefited. So uh, vitally important to uh, keep the moratorium uh, going. So I make that a motion, please. Second year, seconded by Councilor Kathy Bork. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none. Call for the question. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded. Carry. The next, oh, we have one more here. And item 10 F. And I will refer this to Councillor Donaldson. Yeah, this would be very, very quick. I'd like for the municipality to send a letter to the RCMP to up patrols in the Laurel Hills Cemetery area there's no it's a little side road there's no road signage there but it's known as the old greenwood road or the old golf course road uh it's become quite a problem for the last few months young people are going to hang out do their thing wherever they want to do it but this is not an appropriate spot first of all there's a house that's very very close three or four other houses that are impacted by the noise and you know what goes on uh, so they're going to hang out they're going to hang out somewhere that's just not an appropriate place so um, i would like like for them to you know patrol talk to the young people that hang out there uh, and just don't want to cause trouble but it's very disruptive to the to the immediate residents so uh, I, I would like council support on having a letter sent and you're making that I'll make a motion. Okay, moved, seconded by Councillor Digden. Any questions or comments? Just one more comment to be to be clear. It was the Laurel Hills Cemetery, and there's signage on the main road coming from both directions. So the RCMP should have no problem finding it. They wouldn't be familiar with the. Uh, if you told them the old Greenwich Road, that would mean nothing to them. Okay. If there's no comments or questions. And that's in uh, Pumnico Head. Pumnico Head, yes. Yeah. I'll call for the question. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded. Perry. Financial requests. The first couple are in my district. I have 
one from the Abrams River Wharf Association. And what they would like to do is uh, a couple of uh, years ago, there was a sign directed at the uh, beginning of the road, the village sign, and we never did anything more. The, the intention was that later on, we would at least try to beautify the area, maybe build something around the sign or whatever to make it look better now. If you see the, the old concrete, whatever bases that are sticking out, and they'd just like to, to, to make it a little bit better. And they're asking for $500. I can't make that motion, but if someone could make that motion for me. Moved by Councillor Dickton, seconded by Councillor Albra, uh, no, Bork, to award uh, $500 to the Abrams River Wharf Association. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. The next one is mine as well, and it's a request from the East Kempfield Fire Department. And what they're doing is they 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 have to replace the oil tank in the fall at, at the fire hall to, to a cost of around twenty five hundred, and they're asking for five hundred dollars from the municipality on a community grant to help uh, uh, pay for that. So moved by Nicole Albright. Or comes no deputy warden Albright, sorry, and seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Next one is uh, the Ladies Auxiliary West Bunkerville Fire Hall, and that would be Councillor Dotchamon. You make that motion, okay? And seconded by Councillor Dickin. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carry. Uh, next one is the West Public Health Club. Again, Councillor Dontemal. So moved. Moved by Councillor Dontemal, seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. I'd also like to thank Councillor Dontremont each year. He helps me out because I run out of money fairly quick and he helps me out with these projects. So in these organizations, thank you. Okay. The and I would like to thank uh, Councillor Digden because in my district, there's only uh, four not-for-profit organizations. So I uh, can only give out uh, you know, so many of those grants. So it's great to uh, support the rest of the municipality. That's right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we voted on that. Yes. Uh, the next one is Festival of Cutting Under Wedgeport, and that would be Councillor Woodrow. He makes a motion, seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Much minded, carried. Next one is the Wedgeport Tuna Museum, and that's also Councillor Woodrow. Make that motion. Councillor Buddha, make the motion. Councillor, all kinds of seconders. Uh, Councillor Albright, uh, seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Next one is the Wedgeport Legion. And again, it's Councillor Boudreaux. Moved by Councillor Boudreaux, seconded by Councillor Bork. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Uh, we did the Westport Legion. The next one is mine as well, and it's from the Hubbard's Point Community Center. And I would like to make a motion to give them $500. It's not indicated on the letter, but uh, uh, I'm going to give them $500. And if someone could make that motion for me, Councillor Albright, seconded by Councillor Sonia. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Carry. Any agenda topics for next meeting? Notice of motion. Councillor Albright. I just want to mention one thing, and I'm not sure if it's an agenda topic for next meeting or if I should have asked it to be on the agenda. I just it came to me partway through the meeting. I guess it's more of a question for uh, for CAO Muse. Um, we had talked about having a tri-unit meeting for uh, ground search and rescue. Have we made any headway in that? Is there any indication if that will happen? When it will happen? 
There is no set date for that as, at this time. Uh, we have we've had a number of CAO meetings scheduled and and I know yeah were canceled. Um, so um, I was hoping to add that topic to to those discussions, but um, we had a meeting set this Thursday that was that was uh, canceled by one of okay. The, I was just and curious. So, anything. The and answer that, is something that we've already made a motion on that. Correct. Do that, so, right? so we don't yeah. need a motion on that. It's just a matter of getting it no. done. Exactly. Yeah, just a status update, which is, yes. which is totally appropriate. Good. Okay. Councilor Strat. Oh, just, just quickly, I know it's, I came in late. I just want to, it's sort of a notice of motion, but if you allow me, uh, that the steering committee, the bridge steering, the, sorry, the bridge committee that uh, for the for the uh, YMCA, uh, we had our meeting was quite lengthy, a big discussion on how we move forward to uh, try to open the 275 Main, which is the old YMCA building. And just to let you and the public know that uh, we've, we've, we've moved forward to send a recommendation to the, uh, to the steering committee that uh, the Mariner Center uh, lead lead the, the, the project to get uh, all, you know, whether it be how we make two programs, how do we open uh, the, the place, all that piece together. There's a lot to think about how, you know, how many people do we need? How much is it gonna cost? And all that. So Dor Dor Doram, uh, who is the manager there, will be uh, heading that along with, working along with the, uh, Recreation Department of the uh, municipality and the town of Yarmouth, and possibly maybe the CAO could. I, I they'll probably be working with Argyle too. Do you think from the discussion, or you're not sure, CAO? Just if you could add that in, I'm not sure where that went. Well, um, it wasn't specified really. No, I, I I think that Duram has reached out to the municipality of Yarmouth's recreation department, but they, he's not really reached out to ours at this time, recognizing that we just we just hired our new uh, recreation director. So um, I suspect that will come in time, but it will it will have to be something that um, that we'll have to discuss. I mean, if they're gonna use our recreation programming for, for aquatic services, we're really not equipped for that right now. Um, so we'd have to change the way that we look at our model if that's the case. And Mr. Chair, just to, for another minute, uh, just to let you know, it, it you know, uh, I'm one that likes to jump quick, but this this is going to take time. You know, uh, Jeff Gushu, who's uh, the CAO, who's helping us on this uh, on the committee. You know, just to get Durham to uh, and the Mariner Center to have some kind of a plan put together. We we're asking like for the middle of June or like the 8th or 10th of June. And that may not be even enough time. There's a lot of stuff to, to, to look at. I'm not going to go into detail, but wow, I never did realize that there's a lot of things to look at. So uh, it's September, a date, the end of September. We're not sure, but we're kind of shooting September, October for an opening of that OYMCA. Just, and that's just for information. Thank you for giving me that time. Okay. Question period, did we get any questions from, there was nothing that came in, there's no in camera. Now, before we adjourn, I would just like to, so the public realizes we, we started earlier and we're finishing quite a bit earlier this, uh, this evening with this meeting. And the reason being we're, it's, it's with great sadness that we, we announced that one of our staff members has lost her husband. And uh, tonight was the visitation and we thought that some of the members uh, would like to attend. So on behalf of council, we want to express our deepest condolences to our staff member as well as the family. And I think it's only appropriate that we honor a moment of silence in respect for the loss of her husband.
Thank you very, very much. Again, deepest condolences to, to everybody that it, that's, uh, that it has affected. Okay, we're, we're uh, in line for a motion of adjournment. Move, meet, and adjourned. Moved by Councillor Dickton, seconded by Councillor Strang. Thank you very much.